So my name is Josue Velasquez. I'm a research scientist at the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. And I have two main roles. From one side, I'm the director of the uh, Sustainable Supply Chain Lab that mainly focuses on working with companies, helping companies to approach sustainability in all the dimensions uh, by also looking at uh, logistics and supply chain management operations. And on the other side, I'm also the founder and director of the MIT Low Income Firms Transformation Lab, what we call LEAF Lab, that focuses on working with micro and small firms in developing countries. And through this uh, project, this initiative, we intend to uh, also look at the uh, underserved communities and help the, the bottom billion that uh, needs a lot, of, uh, a lot of help. So sustainable supply chain, as a definition, it's, uh, it's difficult, mainly because it doesn't exist just in the static domain. Right, like sustainability is a term that is, is more understood as a trajectory. So things that were sustainable 10 years, 20 years ago are not necessarily sustainable now, and this, this term keeps evolving. So we refer to a sustainable supply chain or sustainable company, those that are better are uh, understanding their conditions and what actually are the potential risks that can you know, uh, jeopardize their operations for the future and also for future generations. So most of these uh, organizations that are really considered sustainable are really uh, tracking, uh, identifying suppliers, key vulnerabilities in their supply chain and their operations and trying to capture that information, build strategies and plans, and then implement all of this in all the dimensions of sustainability. Now, uh, talking about the different dimensions, as we were saying, it's always referred to the, to the environmental sustainability, the economic sustainability, and also the, the social sustainability, although now people use more the ESG concepts with governance as well. But in general, we understand that a key component has to do a lot with people, right? And of course, particularly now in these times, understanding the importance of social justice, trying to uh, create the, 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 the equal conditions and, and fair conditions for, for people and talent that work in the supply chains and also those that are depending on these operations in the supply chain uh, should be considered also in any strategy on sustainable supply chains. Uh, of course, the, what is happening more at this stage is the importance of climate change. So at this stage, we also know that um, we are in the middle of a heat wave uh, affecting Europe, affecting US, affecting many developing countries as well. And this has consequences of what, what is being told for the last 50 more years. And, and now many companies are working more towards achieving this, the, their carbon reduction targets or the carbon neutrality. And part of what supply chain uh, unsustainability domains have focused more has to do with environmental sustainability without you know, missing the other big part which has to do a lot with people. But another piece that uh, most of the time uh, is left, as, left aside has to do with the consumers. And consumers play a key role because in fact they are, they are the ones who uh, completely move the supply chains and operations in our organizations. So one of the things that we've been studied is how, how companies can, uh, by looking at their internal operations and work with supply chain transparency, involve consumers into their sustainability strategies. And this seems to be much more impactful, meaningful, than actually just focusing on squeezing efficiencies by looking at uh, new type of vehicles or new, new uh, energy sources. And some of these examples, uh, for instance, the Green Button project that we've been working for the last uh, uh, three years plus, and the idea of this project was to uh, uh, test whether consumers, during the context of e-commerce, uh, were willing to delay their, their deliveries by looking at environmental impacts, right? The fast uh, shipping. So when companies deliver with fast shipping, as uh, we all know, uh, after the, the strategies in 2019 of Amazon that said, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna move from the two-day shipping to same-day delivery, and then later Walmart.com, and then Target, and then everybody in the world delivering as fast as possible. This affects the, uh, the operations, the logistics operations, so it makes it very hard for companies to consolidate. Uh, and instead of sending just uh, a, a single truck to a neighborhood that is fully loaded, now there are multiple trucks going in the neighborhood during the same day or uh, multiple days over the week, which increases the carbon emissions associated with that operation. Now what the companies are doing is trying to find ways to optimize that delivery. But the green button uh, tests, tests what is the willingness to wait of the consumers by showing information that is not just displayed in terms of uh, what are the kilograms of CO2 that your package has by having fast shipping deliver, delivery. But instead of saying what is the amount of trees, for instance, that are needed to trap that amount of heat or what is the amount of uh, energy to require to recycle certain amount of garbage or, or, or other uh, similar indicators. And the idea was to test if any of them will have a better you know, uh, 
uh, impact effect in, in driving consumers to wait. And what we uh, observe is that definitely explaining these environmental statements in terms of trees, how many trees are you actually killing uh, because you are asking for fast shipping, uh, prove that consumers, uh, uh, you know, for all those that were willing to wait, it's like almost 90% 90, 90 of, 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 of the environmental impact, 90% uh, were uh, willing to wait once they were provided information in, in terms of trees, rather than kilograms of CO2 that had less than 30%. Now what we did is to actually say, okay, so now that I'm showing this information, we are giving companies uh, the opportunity to, uh, to have four or five days to deliver instead of fast shipping because the consumers are willing to wait. Now, if that happens, the question is how companies can leverage that uh, increase of supply capacity to actually improve their logistics operations. So there are opportunities to increase collaboration, but this is highly contingent to the importance of providing transparency in the supply chain and make the consumers or customers also part of the strategy to really achieve the carbon reduction targets that companies are really aiming for.